Welcome to another great episode of The Bourbon Road with your hosts, Jim and Brian, where they talk bourbon and, of course, drink bourbon. Grab yourself a pour, kick back, and enjoy another trip down the bourbon road. Very excited to have BlantonsBourbonShop.com as a new sponsor for the Bourbon Road Podcast. In fact, this podcast was brought to you by Blanton's Bourbon Shop. BlantonsBourbonShop.com is the only official merchandiser for Blanton's, the original single barrel. Looking for a unique gift? Blanton's Bourbon Shop has got you covered. BlantonsBourbonShop.com is your home for all Blanton's gifts. You know, friends, it's never too early to start planning your trip to the Bourbon Trail for 2023. We hope you'll join the Bourbon Road crew as we pull out all the stops this year at Bourbon on the Banks. So mark your calendars for October 6th and 7th, and we'll plan on seeing you in Frankfort, Kentucky. Be sure to listen in during the halftime break for all the details on Bourbon on the Banks. Welcome back, friends, to another episode of the Bourbon Road Podcast. I am your host, Jim Shannon, and with me today in the studio is Brian Hyatt, your co-host. Brian, welcome back to another show. Thank you, Jim. It's great to be back. Yeah, we've been on a bit of a whirlwind lately. We've done a Southern Road Trip. We've done a number of distilleries. We've had some music artists on. We actually talked about the uh, Tennessee Whiskey Trail experience. So that's something we got coming up. We've had a number of good shows. and We got some great ones coming up this Saturday, by the way. So after this show releases this Saturday, we're going to be sitting down with Victoria from Uncle Nearest. Now that is going to be a blast. That's going to be a lot of fun. If you've listened to anything that I've said recently, I really, really love the Uncle Nearest story and the history behind it. I think it's just super cool. And they're in town for the Derby. So we're in Louisville, Kentucky. Most of our listeners know that. The Uncle Nearest team is in town for the Derby. They're doing it right. They're uh, hitting the town and dressing up and doing all the things. And they're going to be at the Derby on Saturday. But we're going to sit down with them just a couple hours before the 1 o'clock post and uh, and have a little podcast. So that's going to be a great fun. we got some other distilleries coming up. We've got uh, Buzzard's Roost. We've got uh, Bluegrass Distillers. We've got Three Chord coming. We've got... 15 stars, 15 stars, hard truth. We've got a lot of really good stuff coming up in the near future, but we're kind of, kind of sitting down today with a couple of bottles that I think we've both been seeing on the shelf and wanting to pick up. And, uh, Brian, what did you pick up? Well, I picked up the, uh, Penelope four grain, uh, straight bourbon whiskey. And, uh, I've actually seen a couple of roadies post about Penelope, uh, somewhat recently. And so something that I've been wanting to try. So this is the four grain and, and what's this bottle cost? Um, I was with tax and everything out the door, uh, right around $37. Okay. So not too bad. All right. Well, we'll get into tasting that one in a minute. And I want to let everybody know that I am sipping on a special release of Wolcott. This is uh, a bottle that's out of the 1792 Barton Distillery in Bardstown. That's a Buffalo Trace slash Sazerac Distillery, and uh, this is a nine. This is the 90 proof version. They have a hundred proof uh, bottle and bond as well. But I heard a lot of good things about their their standard 90 proof uh, Wolcott. So I made sure to pick up a bottle of that, and that was around thirty dollars. So. Brian and I are going to be tasting to a couple of these today. So this is a good show where we get to sit down with a couple of, you know, reasonably priced bottles that may not may or may not be on everybody's radar. Right. That's right. All right. Well, I'm going to if, if it's OK, Brian, I'm going to start off with the Wolcott. I've actually been sipping yeah. on this one for a couple of days now. I picked it up at Total Wine. I think I paid about 30 right at 30 dollars for it. And there was a lot to choose from that I hadn't had yet. So there's a lot of uh, new expressions on the shelves uh, this spring, and there's a lot to choose from. So choose carefully. 
uh, watch reviews, listen to the show, watch the watch the website and the blog postings, and and try to pick out bottles that um, that seem to to measure up. And this is one that I think does. And the reason it does, let me just say why it does. I've always been a fan of seventeen ninety two. I've always liked uh, their their rye bourbons. There, I've loved a little bit of. It's kind of like a Spitfire. It's a little bit of. Uh, uh, cherry with a spice and a black pepper on the back end. The Wolcott is definitely along those lines. I don't know the exact mash bill on this. We do know it's 51% corn and we do know it's a rye bourbon, but it is bottled by the Barton 1792 distillery in Bardstown. And I don't know if everybody's aware of this, but they, they no longer have tours there. The gift shops close. They no longer do tours out of that distillery. I don't know why they shut all that down, but they're still producing massive quantities of bourbon there. So, cheers, Brian. I'm going to go through this cheers. one. It's got a nice vanilla nose on it. A little bit of alcohol. Uh, the oak is present. It's very typical, though. I'm getting uh, it's kind of. I'm getting a little bit of the like pear notes out of the barley. A little bit of cherry. I almost want to say it's got a nutty character to it, but it's pretty, pretty light. Cheers. I'm going to take a taste. Yeah. More of that vanilla packed with vanilla and oak. Um, the cherries coming through. It's not super rich. It's more like a, just a, just a center of the road bourbon, kind of uh, what you would expect out of a good solid bourbon. It's not overly thin, though. At 90 proof, I think it's got a, a decent body to it. And uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's a pretty good middle-of-the-road bourbon. I would say for 30 bucks, you can't go wrong with this one. It's actually pretty tasty, straight, neat like this. I would say it's right It's right in that range of, you know, kind of a bottle. You would say, I can mix this. I can drink it straight. I can do whatever I want with it because I can use it in cooking if I want to because it's 30 bucks a bottle, right? I'm not paying too awful much for it. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm going to have to give that one a try soon. Yeah, I always love going into Total Wine because they have such a large selection and you can go in there and you get to see a lot of new expressions that are out. A lot of times you have to do a little bit of research to see actually who makes them. In this case, it's stamped right on the front of the bottle. Distilled by the Barton 1792. So no guessing there. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of 1792. I've always really enjoyed their stuff. You know, as it settles in a little bit on the finish, it is a little drying. So there's a little bit of alcohol up front, a little bit of drying effect on the back end. Um, I would just say just a solid middle of the road bourbon. Nothing to write home about. But man, if you got a bottle of this, it's you're going to enjoy it for sure. We'll make sure to put a picture of the bottle up, folks, and uh, put our tasting notes in there so you can you can check it out. Brian, let's talk a little bit about this Penelope you have in your glass. Let me start by saying this: you know, this is a uh, affordable bottle. You're looking at eighty proof. It, of course, is a four grain, and the color is very, very light. Um, I'm holding it up here so Jim can see it on the camera. He can. That's a kind of a straw you. color, even, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's very very light. Um, the nose is it's it's a pleasant nose. It's, there's not a lot of alcohol burn to it or anything like that. It's actually pretty nice. You know, if I right off the bat, I'm just going to say it, it smells sweet, uh, a little sweet, maybe kind of fruity on there, uh, like an apple. But I'm going to go ahead and give it a taste here as well. Uh, cheers, Jim. Cheers. So it's definitely sweet, a uh, little bit creamy on the palate. I'm also going to say that uh, definitely hints of vanilla coming through. But for me, the biggest thing really is that it it is sweet and it's pleasant. Uh, the finish is thin. Uh, not It's not a long finish. 
you know, when I look at the back of this bottle, I can even tell you it says there's a kiss of tangerine citrus. I get that a little bit. I do. Maybe not as much as I would want, you know, after after looking at what it says on the on the bottle here. But uh, overall, it really is a nice little nice little pour uh, that that's overall sweet. So, you know, I don't think it's going to blow anybody away, but for $37, uh, I, I think it's a good buy. I definitely do. Well, we're going to have to swap bottles. I'll give you the Wolcott. You give me the Penelope and we'll trade for a little bit. Drink it down about halfway, Brian, and then we'll swap out. How's that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a fresh crack for me. I mean, I just purchased this uh, a few hours ago. So, Well, awesome. Yeah, I've got something I'm going to tip up here on the second half of the show. I, I just I just wanted to get into this Wolcott because I just got this feeling like, you know, it's one of those uh, sleepers on the shelf that nobody's really reaching for yet. And, um, you know, if you go to if you go to like Costco, you know, they've got the they've got the uh, the 1792 bourbon in there in the big bottle that you can get. And uh, I think a lot of people are reaching for that for a price point. But, you know, this Wolcott's the same juice. I'm assuming it's the same, probably the same mash bill uh, as the typical 1792 stuff. And I just think people are probably passing, typically passing it by. Even though it's it's at that $30 point, which seems to be that, you know, that, you know, 20 to $30 range seems to be where bottles tend to move okay, right? A lot of people are like looking for bottles in that 20 to $30 range so they can enjoy something without breaking the bank. You know, your, yours is 37. You said the Penelope. That's right. 37. Yeah. So still in that 30 ish kind of range. I think these are, I think it's good when we represent these bottles on the show, it gives people some choices to make that are not, you know, high on the hog. That's right. I think we've had a couple of bottles lately that have been a little pricey. You had that, uh, that Kentucky Al Mardi Gras five hundred dollar bottle there. That's some good stuff. That's right. No, I mean it, it's good, uh, but it's definitely a high price point. And I know that we've had some others that that were as well, you know. But I've always been a huge fan of you know even the bottom, bottom, bottom shelf. I like how bottom. Oh, I mean, I I'm good with the. Well, I mean, I've talked about it several times. The old overhaul. Um, you know, you can get that for. Pretty much nothing at the bottom of the shelf. You know, there's there's several others as well. Uh, I'm really not afraid to try anything. And uh, there's some hidden gems. You just you just got to search for them and be willing to try something a little different. There are, but it's like uh, you can go in to that bottom shelf and you get your feet wet and you get your ankles wet and then you get your knees wet a little bit. And then all of a sudden it drops off and you're drinking Kentucky Gentleman. So you got to be kind of careful. Oh, that's right right <laughs> but you know let's be fair kentucky gentleman probably come probably commands a huge market share even though it's not maybe our favorite sipper right it does in fact uh sell an awful lot and same with the 10 high and old crow and the other things that are basically sitting down there on the bottom shelf those stores are moving oh, a yeah. lot of bottles of that stuff that's right and you know the the funny thing is you know we can Say there's a big drop off there, but so I've had some pretty expensive bottles uh, here recently, and there there can be a pretty big drop off with those as well. It's not just a not just a bottom shelf thing. I agree. We don't we don't talk a lot on the show about whiskeys that disappoint us, right? We we usually try to focus on those that have got our attention, those that uh, people want to hear about. I don't know. There's there's just something about listening to a podcast or a YouTube channel or something where a whiskey is being bashed that never really appealed to me uh, because I figure there's too many great whiskeys that need to be talked about rather than spend your time talking about the ones to avoid. So I just think that, you know, when we find those and Brian, we get them right. They're sent to us in the mail. Sometimes we get wonderful whiskey sent to us. In fact, I would say most of the time we get really, really delicious whiskey sent to us. It's just occasionally we get one that's just not ready yet. You know, just it's just for whatever reason, it doesn't appeal to us. 
And uh, we just don't promote it. We just don't put it on the show and we don't bash them. So it's kind of the difference between like, uh, what is it? American Idol and The Voice, right? That's one, right. One of them is trashing singers and the other one is lifting them up. So we're just trying to lift up the whiskeys a little bit. And just because we may not like it doesn't mean that you don't like it and it's not good. So this is this is how we view it and how we taste it and what we like. Uh, but there's plenty of times that someone hands me something and they say, you've got to have this. It's amazing. And I don't agree. And I'm sure there's a lot of times I pass something over that people say, what is he talking about? <laughs> well, there's plenty of palates out there. And that's why there's so much diversity on the shelf. So. Well, Brian, it's pretty exciting to have our new sponsor on. Anybody who listen, is listening to the show now heard him on the intro. Um, Blantonsbourbonshop.com. How cool is that? Oh, it's it's incredibly cool. And, uh, you know, I've been a huge Blantons fan uh, for many reasons over the years. But uh, this one, you know, Blantons Bourbon Shop is very near and dear to my heart. It's uh, good friends of mine. Uh, that run that and it's the official Blanton's bourbon shop. So everything that you would see in the, uh, in the gift shop and what you see in the liquor stores, that's all produced by the Blanton's bourbon shop. And and they do a great job of finding new products that they're going to roll out. When you look at it and you see that you can buy some Blanton's coffee or some maple syrup or uh, you know, coffee mugs, T-shirts, hats, I mean, they pretty much have it all. The chocolates, I would highly recommend the chocolates. They're, they're pretty solid. Yeah, I know. We got to be careful because, you know, we in the history of the podcast, we've had a huge number of reviews on on Apple Podcasts, right? We've got like a 5.0, 5 out of 5 rating on Apple Podcasts. But that doesn't mean we haven't had one or two people say something about us negative. <laughs> And one of the comments, and I'll just say it right now, one of the comments was recently, came in February. Somebody said, Blanton's this and Blanton's that. Move along to another. <laughs> so I guess we talk about Blanton's a lot on this show, huh? We must. Well, I think we do. I think, well, because you have quite the Blanton's collection and we started drinking from it in the beginning, right? That's right. You know, to have a five star rating on Apple podcasts means that you have to have so many more five-star reviews than the one or two, Mm -hmm. one or two star reviews that you get. So we appreciate those comments negative or negative or positive in either way. But uh, I think that we, we did hear you when you made that comment, we did read it and we saw it and we're paying attention to you. But unfortunately we have to talk about Blanton's on this show because guess what? They're a big sponsor. So Glad to have them, right? Blandonsbourbonshop.com. Welcome to the Bourbon Road. Yes, welcome. We are we are excited. Jim, how many toppers do you have? I don't really collect toppers. What about you? Well, um, I did not until I was gifted uh, the, the stave where you can place all the toppers. So I did start to collect those and made a second round and then started collecting the gold ones. And I said, you know what, this is getting a little crazy. I'm just going to stop collecting these. Cause I know a lot of folks that want them. So now I just get those out. If somebody says they want a topper, but it was a fun, it was a fun little thing to do. <laughs> so all those roadies listening to this episode, it's Brian at the bourbon road.com. If you need a topper, right? <laughs> That's right. I've got a whole drawer full of them. All right. So the gold ones are tough to get. They are. If you actually have the silver ones, uh, you've you've done something. Yeah. So what? So tell me about the different colors. So we got obviously the the bronzish, antique looking ones mm-hmm. are from the U.S. bottles, right? Right. So what about the gold ones? So the gold um, that that's found on those international releases, and uh, the silver they actually stopped making. Um, there used to be some plain silver bottles out there, and I'm sure there's still some out in the wild selling for ridiculous amounts of money. But uh, I'm always interested to see if they're going to bring those silvers back. But you can get the golds if you find a spot where you can purchase some of the international bottles. Uh, you know, I, I would not recommend going and purchasing those online and having those shipped or anything like that. Uh I would also say that, you know, don't buy anything. If someone posts on the Bourbon Roadies 
Facebook page and says, hey, I have all these bottles. It's just best practice not to trust people in that situation. Yeah, we've had it seems like we've had a rush of uh, spammers in the roadies lately. And uh, I just went in and tightened up all the restrictions a little bit. And Melody came on as a moderator and she's really Mm -hmm. she's really looking at people hard to make sure we're not getting. But still, they can get through because you can't tell sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. They look like a an absolute normal person that's been posting in other groups and has activity. And they're just, it's a mom with kids and all this other kind of stuff. And they, they change their profile. They switch things up. They make it look good. They change it around. They're bouncing. Yeah. So we apologize to those in the group that have to deal with that from time to time. But you know what? We set it up now where if I think if two people report a post as spam, it will be removed automatically without even having to have an admin come in and do anything with it. So I'm not encouraging you to go after your fellow roadies. I'm just saying if, uh, if you report it as spam, it's a good chance that it'll get knocked out pretty quick. So we appreciate your help on that. Well, Brian, what do you think about all the, the music guests we've had recently? Well, I love it. And, and I'm a huge music guy. So I've gone to concerts many, many, many concerts over the years. And I like all types of music. It can be anything from classical all the way up to country to hard rock to heavy metal. I mean, believe it or not, I've, I truly have listened to it all. So I think it's always uh, very cool to have on artists and to listen to their stories and just learn more about them and all of the experiences that they've had over the years. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Taylor Austin Dye, she was on our show. It's been a number of months back, but she has she has broken through. So if you listen to the Taylor Austin Dye episode, now you I was actually had my granddaughter visiting me this weekend. She's 18 years old and she's into all things 18 year old, right? Music and all. And she came to spend the weekend with us. And I said, I know that song. I heard it play and she I gave her a uh, she was doing some work around the house and I gave her one of those Bluetooth speakers to turn on out there. I said, I know that song. She goes, you do? I said, yeah, she was on our show. That's Taylor Austin. And I, she goes, no way. You know her. <laughs> it's like, well, I don't know her, know her, but yeah, she was on the show and that, that song's called rest in peace. That's pretty cool. And it is definitely at the top of the charts right now. And then we had Bo Garrett on, which was just phenomenal. That was such a great episode. And, then we had Rob Robinson on, who was uh, in Blackfoot, and Leonard Skinner. That was a great show. What a what a what an awesome show we had there. And then just recently, Joe Clark came on, and you know Joe sings kind of Americana music, Bourbon Trail kind of good solid. I called it country. He goes, ah, I don't know if I'm country or not, <laughs> <laughs> but you know he sings. He sings truth. He sings good stuff, but he doesn't drink. And that was an episode. And it was just recently where we got to talk about, you know, what it means to realize when you've gone too far with drinking. Right. And we've probably got a few people that have and and uh, are going through that now. And and, you know, it's nice to hear somebody come on and say, "I, I couldn't handle it. I had to stop. So. We promote it, but we don't promote it to the point where it ruins your life. That's right. So we encourage all the roadies who are listening to our episodes and and any listener for that matter, whether you're a roadie or not, if you're listening to one of our episodes and you think that you would like to hear more of these music episodes, not more than we're doing now, but just have us continue to do those. We'd love to hear the feedback from you. Uh, I know that when we were having chefs on, we got a lot of a lot of reviews from people who love, you know, the foodies out there, the people that love bourbon and food pairing and that love, you know, eating out at restaurants that love fine dining. Um, So our plan is to have more chefs on. Certainly our plan is to have more musicians on. You know, we've had a number of authors on in the last year. That's always fun. But. I, I guess it's just about mixing it up a little bit, right? That's right. You know, Jim, and you said something about Arthur. Arthur's here. Um, you know, I saw a bottle at the store earlier, and it was Hemingway. Oh, yeah. And I really wanted to grab it. But I was like, you know, 
I'm not buying another bottle for $110 right now. I'm buying something under $40. Um, but that one intrigued me a little bit. I'm going to try that one soon. Well, Brian, hold off on that for a minute. I, I do encourage you to buy a bottle of the Hemingway, but not before we do our Hemingway episode, because guess what? We have the Hemingway rye. It's been sent to us. So um, we definitely are going to have um, have that on a show. So if you've been, folks, if you've been wondering about the Hemingway rye and then you've been itching to maybe pick up a bottle of it, I'm not going to tell you don't go ahead and get it. Go ahead and get it if you want to. But we got a show coming up. So stay tuned. I'm ready. Yeah. Well, Brian, let's, uh, let's keep sipping on this Wolcott and that Penelope four grain. And uh, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we got uh, more to drink and more to talk about. Looking for a unique gift? Blanton's Bourbon Shop has got you covered. All of their handcrafted wood products are made in their in-house wood shop with authentic bourbon barrels. Specializing in barrel-aged potent treats, they use Blanton's barrels to age their own maple syrup, honey, and coffee. Find the most unique gift ideas for your golf lover, cigar connoisseur, avid coffee drinker, and Blanton's fan. Want to win an authentic Blanton's barrel head? Make sure you sign up for the giveaway on the homepage of their website. Blantonsbourbonshop.com is your home for all Blanton's gifts. As we mentioned earlier in the show, we hope you'll join us this fall on October 6th and 7th for Bourbon on the Banks. The festival itself is from 2 to 6 p.m. on October the 7th, and you can pick those tickets up at bourbononthebanks.org for $65. They also have an early access ticket for $75. It'll get you in an hour early and definitely get you access to some special pours. But if you always like that VIP access, this year they're bringing in the VIP access tickets. We'll give you access to their VIP tent and all the great things that go along with that for $175. Be sure to check out bourbononthebanks.org to get all the details on this year's event. So we are back. Brian and I managed to put away the rest of that Walcott and the rest of that uh, Penelope four grain. Um, any final words on the, on your four grain Penelope? Um, really nothing other than, you know, if you have an extra $37 you're wanting to spend on a bottle of bourbon, I would give this one a shot. Yeah. I kind of feel the same way about the Walcott, uh, the 90 proof Walcott. Um, I feel like uh, it's a um, good example of solid Kentucky rye bourbon. So um, Barton 1792 has always done it right. They've always got a little bit of that cherry in there, you know, and I, it definitely comes out in this one. And uh, just drinks nice, drinks easy, drinks uh, kind of smooth. It's got a little bit of a, a pepper punch on the back, but um, overall, Pretty solid whiskey for 30 bucks. So I uh, definitely say, you see Wolcott on the shelf, pick it up. You can't go wrong. Now, I can't speak about the Wolcott bottle and bond, the 100 proof version. Uh, I haven't tried that one before, but definitely the 90 proof is pretty good. Now, I think last week when we had Joe Clark on, I had the Cooper's Craft 100. And in that particular case, I feel like the 100 proof version wins out on the Cooper's craft. But in the case of the Wolcott, at least from what I've, what I've read and what I understand, at least from what I've tasted so far, the 90 proof is probably the better of the two. It's kind of funny how that works, right? It is. <laughs> I mean, when it comes to ancient age, it's kind of the same story. Like I like the ancient age 80 proof, but the 90 proof, you can have it. It's like, 
Yeah. And I don't know. It's just, I like the 80 proof better. And I don't know what the difference is. I know what the proof difference is, but I don't know, you know, you know, what where, rick houses they come out of, what's the aging profile, you know, what barrels, that kind of stuff. But the 80 proof is always a better choice. All right, Brian. So what are we drinking? Because we're drinking the same thing in this half. What are we drinking in this half? Yeah. So as soon as I saw what Jim was drinking, I said, hold on a second. I'm going to do the same thing. So uh, we have the Weller Special Reserve, um, which to make it easier for everybody, that is the green label. And uh, it is 90 proof and it's a weeded bourbon, which is something that I really do love and enjoy quite a bit. So this is definitely one of those that, that I look forward to drinking every time. Yeah. It's, it's it's one that I like as well. And it's, again, it's not one of those that's going to knock your socks off, but I like it as a kind of a kind of reset my compass. Right. So you hear all the, well, or this, well, or that Buffalo trace, this Buffalo trace that and you get kind of caught up in the hype a little bit. And, um, since you rarely see this stuff on the shelf, even the special reserve, I mean, if you're not in Ohio or Texas, you're probably not seeing it very often, but, um, you, you sort of get this idea in your mind that it's some exceptional over the top whiskey, right? But every now and then you just need to visit one of these bottles and just, Reset your compass. Understand that there's a lot of great whiskey out there. And Weller is a good whiskey, no doubt about it. Uh, but the Special Reserve is not something that is, uh, I would put in the exceptional column. It's just a good, solid bourbon, right? Yeah, I agree. I think it, you know, for me, I think I would say the word classic. Um, I think it's just a you know, something that that's been around and, you know, we always have, and I do, and I do really appreciate and love this. We have a lot of bourbons that are finished and a lot of new, uh, new things that are coming out pretty regular, like, you know, the Amberana barrel and all these different things that we're now experiencing. So I think you said it best, you know, you're resetting your compass, kind of going back, doing something a little bit more simple that's been around for a while. And uh, I think this definitely fits the bill for that. Exactly. So the Weller Special Reserve, and and I won't talk about what uh, manufacturer's suggested retail price is because you just, you're not, you're just not going to find it typically in the store. And when you do, it's going to have a little bit of an elevated price on it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, in Kentucky, where it's very difficult to find allocated whiskeys, uh, you can still pick up the green label for 50 or 60 bucks, right? Um, yep. You can get it on Drizzly for about 40 if you're in a shipping state. Um, you can get it from a number of other kind of shipping outlets in the $60 range. Um, is it a $60 whiskey? Mm, heck no, not in my mind. Is it a $30 whiskey? Yeah, absolutely. Um, is it a 40 or $50 whiskey? If you got to have it, sure. Why not? Yeah, um, it's a stretch. It's a stretch. It's a stretch. Yeah. I can, I can drive down the street and I can see it at twice retail, uh, and buy it all day long if I want it. I, I choose not to normally only because I understand that the shelf is full of amazing whiskey. So. Yeah. And I'll say that, you know, for me, these are the types of bottles that do, I mean, they're always open, obviously everybody that comes over, you know, they look at bottles and they want to try things if it's a cool label, but as soon as they see Weller, they want to give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, You know, it always amazes me still with how many people that really love bourbon and like they come over and it's not their first time drinking it and they've been drinking bourbon for years and well I've never had the Weller. I mean, well, you gotta gotta try it. So mine just kind of sit there and collect a little bit of dust while we're working all the on all these new uh new, you know, just finishes and different things that are coming out. All right. Well let's check it out. Let's report on it. Let's reset our compasses. What do you say? <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Mine's a fresh crack, by the way. I just cracked the uh, 
the twist off cap on this one. Nice. Mine has been open for a little while. There's uh, mine's a, a a large bottle. Um, a handle. Oh, and it, good for you. Uh, yeah. So we've we've got got that going on, but there's about uh, a quarter of it left. Yeah, I get. You know, just the classic bourbon aromas on this. I get, you know, the vanilla and caramel. Just the lightest amount of oak on it. It is a pretty light color. It's not as light as that Penelope, but it's not far off. I think it's just a hair darker than that Penelope, maybe. It is a little floral. But, you know, it's... I feel like you got it. For me, you got to go... A little hard to, you know, get in a pretty good inhale to get to the floral. That's just for me, though. No, I tend to agree with you. This kind of seems a little kind of light to me, very light and sort of hard to, I don't know, hard to grasp, hard to get a good Mm -hmm. nose on. It's kind of you're Mm -hmm. reaching to try and find notes on it, right? But there's literally zero ethanol burn on the nose. Mm-hmm. And at ninety proof, that's that's a good thing, right? Oh yeah. Overall, for me, I'd say sweet. Yeah. On the nose, I mean it should be sweet and soft. That's right. All right, let's taste it. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's nice. That's that's classic, right? I mean. It's, uh, again, you know, the, the vanilla and caramel, a little bit of honey. But I think that fruit or that floral fruit we were reaching for on the nose is, is there on the palate, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I agree with that. Um, again, you know, just just a sweet, uh, you know, for me, I do feel like I get the honey. I mean, there's there's some of that fruit as well, but I get some honey and Man, do I, I like it. Yeah, it's it's a good bourbon. There's no doubt about it. It is soft. It is uh, honey-like, and uh, the texture is a little thin, but um, I'm not going to complain. I'm going to say that's a good pour of whiskey right there, and um, it's not over the top. Is it a $30 bottle? Is it a $40 bottle? Is it a $50 bottle? I say it's a good thirty to forty dollar bottle. That's it. If it, it would fit, yeah. it would fit squarely in that range, thirty to forty. I, I agree. Yeah. Well, based on what's on the shelf today, right? I mean, when you go down yeah. and you look at the thirty to forty dollar bottles, can this stand up to them? I think so. Is it a sixty dollar bottle? Only if you got to have it. You know, if you haven't had mm-hmm. one and you got to own one. Uh, I wouldn't blame you for paying 60, but um, (laughs) normally I'm probably not going to do it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, on the finish for me, you know, there's the heat shows up a little bit more on the finish. Uh, Kind of an oaky warm, you know, but it's still, still sweet. Yeah. The oak is really, um, very, very present in this bourbon. And that's what I, that's one of the things I like about it is that the, you know, the barrel really comes through quite a bit. Uh, it's got that, that, I don't know, that on the back of the palate, it's got that warm, kind of comforting, oaky, finish on it that everybody looks for and that and that's really nice and it follows that sort of sort of soft sweet up front that it has and you get that sort of warm oaky finish that has got a little bit of heat to it it's kind of a nice transition don't you think i'm really glad you picked up yours uh so that we could drink this because it it really is a nice reset yeah i think it's important every now and then to go back to something like this that is um you know, hard to get. People are wanting to get it. And, and the special reserve is certainly not a bottle to chase after, but uh, it is the entry level of the Weller line. And the Weller line in general is something that people do chase after. 
All right, Brian, so we got some events coming up. We got some things that people are going to be able to to get out to and hopefully see us when we're out and about. Uh, definitely the next thing on our list is going to be the Kentucky Derby, right? I mean, I'm I'm only going to Thurby this year, but you've got tagged basically to attend what Oaks and Derby this year. So I am actually going on uh, Wednesday, which is uh, really for ad agencies and all that good stuff. So we'll be there Wednesday with all the ad agencies. And then Thursday, I get to take a break, relax a little bit. Um, not 100% sure on Oaks. It's uh, maybe shaping up that I don't have to go. And uh, Derby, I will be there. Yeah. Well, good. So that's pretty much 100% coverage, except for Oaks, maybe you said. The Bourbon Road is going to have 100% coverage at the at the Kentucky Derby this year at the Downs. So look for us. Where are you going to be sitting at during Derby? Uh, so I will be um, around the first turn uh, with on the first floor clubhouse. Okay. Uh, first term club there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So just, uh, you know, pretty cool to, I feel like uh, most derbies that I've been to with the exception of two, that's where I've always been. I kind of, that was my very first derby experience. Of course, a lot's changed now. You have the all inclusive, uh, you know, pretty much where you're just tipping, you're not paying for your drinks and, um, you know, I, I do enjoy that. Yeah, so that's what we're doing on Thursday. So we're doing the all-inclusive, all food, all drinks, everything's included, just tipping your waiters and waitresses, and and we're out of the weather, even though Thursday is supposed to be 72 and sunny. So let's see. I, I see a little rain might yeah. be coming in for Oaks again this year. It seems to be the story for Oaks in the last four or five years. It really does. And I think Saturday is supposed to be pretty nice. So <laughs> A little rain in the morning, I think, and then it's supposed yeah. to brighten up and be a sunny day for the for the race that's good yeah oaks always gets the worst of it why is that it really does <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was so thankful last year we were uh we were in the turf club for oaks and i mean right after the big race it just it opened up it poured down it was uh you know all the tvs went off inside they stopped all the races for a little while. So you're right. I mean, it seems to get it every year. Well, the good thing about being in the turf club is you just go belly up to the bar and have a drink and you say, darn, I feel bad for those folks down on the field. Right. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I really do like being out there. And so I'm excited this year that we'll be outside and around the first turn and not, not inside. Um, but it's going to be a good time. And I mean, you hopefully we'll see some roadies there. It'd be a lot of fun to do that. Yeah. So coming up on the 20th of uh, May, we've got our event in, um, in Tennessee at the Tennessee whiskey trail experience. You're going to see us uh, actually the experience itself uh, is the May 18th through the 21st uh, in Nashville. Uh, you can get your tickets on TennesseeWhiskeyTrailExperience.com. You can get an all-access pass for $599. That's a that's a bit to spend, but let me tell you, folks, it gets you uh, basically five days of fun, right? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I, is that four days? I'm sorry. Four days of fun. And you can do a blend-your-own-bottle experience. You can go to the Jack Daniels Barbecue on the Hill. You can do a VIP Grand Tasting. And then on Sunday, Women and Whiskey Experience. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, check it out. We'll be there. We'll be uh, there with bells on. Particularly, you're going to see us at the VIP Grand Tasting Experience. We're going to be as big a part of that as we can be. Uh, definitely uh, check out tennessee whiskey trail experience.com we hope some of you can make it if you can we'd love to see you when we're there and uh it's going to be a great time we're also going to be at bourbon on the banks in october october the 6th actually and 7th uh, october the 6th is uh bourbon on maine and then we've got mm -hmm. the bourbon street on broadway i'm sorry and then on october the 7th you've got uh 
bourbon on the banks. Definitely a lot of fun. An event that's growing every single year. Lots of fun in Frankfort, Kentucky. Go to bourbononthebanks.org to check that out. That's probably the Bourbon Roads, our biggest event of the year. And we pull out all the stops. Uh, we'll have a great distillery. Um, well, Brian, we should probably go ahead and announce that. We're going to have Lawrenceburg Bourbon Company. They're going to be pouring uh, our barrel pick during that event. Uh, we're also going to have the Bourbon Road Bar in there. We'll be selling our swag. We're going to have a big 40-foot tent. Lots of fun. Definitely want to come out and check that out. Going to be a big, fun time. Brian and I will also be walking the Kentucky Bourbon Festival this year. Uh, we'll be visiting all of our friends down there who are attending the event. Uh, we'll be there all three days. It'll be a lots of fun. So there's three big things for you to be doing with us this year. If you're coming to the Bourbon Trail, definitely reach out to Brian and I and, uh, and hey, we'd love to have a pour with you. Wouldn't that be fun, Brian? Have a roadie reach oh, out man, that'd be amazing. in town. Let's, let's, let's meet at uh, Doc Crow's downtown and have a, have a beer yeah. or have a bourbon. Wouldn't that be great? Oh, it'd be awesome. I mean, any chance to get out and have a little bourbon and meet somebody new and just experience all that. It, it's such a blessing to be able to do that. Yeah. So, folks, uh, let us know what you think about uh, the recent episodes we've had. If you think that uh, our music episodes are something you'd like to have more of, definitely let Brian and I know. You can reach out to us on uh, the website, thebourbonroad.com. You can give it, send us a message on our Contact Us page. You can certainly send Brian an email at brian at thebourbonroad.com. I'm jim at thebourbonroad.com. You can reach all of us at team at thebourbonroad.com. So there's all these ways to reach out to us. We'd love to know what you think. Uh, I mean, some of you may think uh, that having a lot of these music episodes are a good thing. Some of you might think it's too much. Let us know. We're happy to tailor the show to meet the needs of our listeners. But we do plan on having more chefs on. I think we're going to have Chef David Danielson on again here real soon. The executive chef down at Dant Crossing, New Haven, Kentucky. That'll be a blast. We're looking forward to that. I'm ready for that. I know. A lot of great things coming. And uh, Brian and I are out on the road. We're constantly churning and burning, trying to put new content out for everybody. So we'd love to hear back from you. Well, Brian, I've had a great day today. I've had a lot of good whiskey, a couple of bottles. Well, one that I haven't had before and one that I need to revisit from time to time to reset my compass. So what do you think? I, I agree with that. You know, it was great to have the Penelope. I get to see what that was all about, taste it. I was, I was happy with what I had there. And then, you know, going, going over to Weller Special Reserve, what a great way to wrap up the day and, Get ready for the rest of Derby week. You know, the funny thing when you're pouring from the Weller bottle, I'm going to put my microphone over to it. When you're pouring from the Weller bottle, what it sounds like, because they got that, uh, that little, uh, what was that called? The little pour bulb at the top there. Listen. Oh yeah. It, it gurgles. It gurgles when it pours. Yeah. <laughs> I have a have feeling mine's going to be making that same sound here soon. Yeah. All right, Brian, it's been a blast. Had a good time. It's nice to 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 take a break from having guests every now and then and just side of, you know, just sort of you and I reset and and chit chat about what's going on. We hope everybody's enjoyed this show. Brian, where can everybody find us on the social medias? Well, folks, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can find us on TikTok. Uh we're gonna start doing a little bit more there. So be looking for that. We also put a little bit out on YouTube. Now, for you YouTube folks, not a lot of videos. Every now and then a short, right? If, if something makes it on That's TikTok, right. it's going to make it on YouTube as a short. But typically, uh, we're not doing too many videos. Most of our stuff is still photography and posts. But uh, we certainly try to hit as many of the social medias as we can. 
Uh, every single week we put on an episode. We uh, we try to make sure every Wednesday there's something new coming out, something entertaining, something that our listeners want to hear. And like we said, sometimes, you know, it's a guest. Sometimes it's just Brian and I chit-chatting. We're always going to have whiskey on the show. We're always going to be drinking, even when our guest isn't drinking. Right, Brian? That's right. But uh, we hope you listen to us every single week. And Brian, what do they have to do to make sure they don't miss a single episode of the Bourbon Road Podcast? Yeah, you're just going to click the subscribe button and you can do that on Apple and YouTube and Spotify and any other streaming source that, you know, has the uh, podcast available on there. Yeah, we're on virtually all the podcast applications. You can even say, Alexa, play the Bourbon Road podcast and she'll come up with our last episode. I really love doing that every now and then just for fun, especially when I've got like friends or family over. I'll say, Alexa, play the Bourbon Road podcast, and up it'll come, and they'll be like, I was just thinking I need to do that next time I put my girls to bed, and they (laughs) think we're going to play a story. (laughs) You think they want to hear us chit-chat about bourbon? You know, the first few times that they listened, they didn't listen to the entire episode, but they did hear my voice, and they're like, that's you, Daddy. That's you, Daddy. I was like, yeah, it is. But they were not interested in hearing anything that that we had to talk no, about. They were just happy to hear that their daddy's famous, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, folks, we'd love to hear from you. Brian and I are so like open to comments and hearing, you know, what you have to say about, you know, your, your thoughts on the bourbon road podcast. We'd love to make it better. If you've got some ideas for a show, if you've got an idea for a guest or a whiskey that you've had that we haven't tasted yet, we'd love to hear about it. Just hop on to the bourbon road.com. That's our website. And there's a contact us page. You can go in and write us a little note and send it off to us. And we'll be sure to get back to you on it. Uh, While you're on the website, my goodness, we've got t-shirts and hats and glasses and decanters and flasks and all kinds of cool bourbon road paraphernalia we hope you pick up a few of those you know when you buy something off the bourbon road website you help us get down the road to do another interview helps pay the gas helps pay the you know the hotel bills whatever it is because we like to be on the road a lot of times it's just us out there hitting this hitting the street putting some miles on our vehicles, getting around to these distilleries to interview them or wherever we're going. And we hope uh, that you enjoy this stuff. And if you do one way to support us is just to buy a t-shirt, buy a hat. Yeah. And the, uh, the new bourbonista shirts, I mean, super cool. Really like those a lot. I think they're going to be a big hit. And uh, I think the design was really good on those, but just a fun, fun shirt. Yeah. It's, it's a long time coming getting a shirt for the ladies. You know, this is not something the guys are going to buy unless they're buying it for their wife. Mm-hmm. This is a, a ladies tea and it's something that's fun and it lets them, you know, sort of express themselves in in the bourbon world. And uh, we hope you'll check it out. It's the bourbon East, t-shirt it's on the website. Ladies, check it out. I think you'll like it. Brian, I've had a blast today. It's been good. It's it's kind of nice when it's just you and I once in a while and we get to kind of just chill and drink whiskey and chit chat. It's kind of, uh, again, like we reset our compass on Weller. It's also you and I get to reset once in a while when we don't have to like study up and get ready for a guest, right? Yeah, it's really nice to reset every now and then. Um, and this was a good one. And I think we're ready to start getting on down the road again well that's 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 a nice segue brian so folks we we're glad you joined us again today we had a great time we're going to continue sipping on our weller and in the meantime we'll see you down the bourbon Bourbon road. road